What is up? Hey, me on a different channel now, which maybe you didn't even recognize until right now. I just wanted to leave the main channel for like super big, cool content or me fighting people in gorilla suits. And I wanted to leave this channel for like reaction. You guys send me stuff. I, I like to do this stuff. I just always feel like it kind of bogs down my other stuff. I don't know. Anyway, I just want to have a different home for this kind of content that you guys request a bit more. Let's get into it. Today, we're going to be looking at bad or good fight scenes from non-action movies. First clip here is from a movie called They Live. I've never seen it. It's the best I could do. It's a pretty good shot though. First and foremost, very impressive feet. Throwing cash into a box from like 20 feet. I mean, you try it. Wait, look, you crazy mother. Put these on. Hey, hey, stay on me. hey don't, don't make me put on sunglasses. I will, I will have no part of that. I, I have no context of what this movie is. So I don't know why the, the sunglasses are important. You done, son of a <laughs> Ooh. Okay, interesting. Oh wait, this is Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Rowdy Rowdy Piper? This is a pro wrestler. I'm trying to save you and your family's life. You couldn't even save your own! <laughs> Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. What is up with the glasses? Okay, we got a super low stance out of the guy, pretty sideways, maybe boxery, knuckles pointed towards the opponent instead of de defensive. Okay, all right. Rule number one, defensive fighting. Don't just stand there. So from Southpaw, his hands are down. He kind of like slips. It's kind of a roll. And then he goes, boom, boom, three to four to the body. And then a two and then a one, which is like a very strange thing to do. If he's Southpaw, that would mean he's probably pretty backhand dominant, unless he just doesn't know what he's doing. The, the roll and then the four, sure. And then the three. But then you would imagine he bop, bop and then finish with the one, two. I don't know, that's just me. And then he lets him get back up. That's very interesting. Ooh, okay. That's what I'm talking about. This, he, he doubled up the jab, he finished with the cross. That's good stuff. <laughs> I love that they wait for them to get back up. I don't wanna up. fight you. Come on. I don't wanna fight you. Ooh, ooh, look at the parries. Bop, he's got that high guard, bop. Ooh, a back fist. Oh, if you know anything about karate, that's a little nahanchi, a little bunkai. Grab the back of the head, bang, throw that elbow. It's a cool exchange. Drops the glass. Oh no, not the glasses! Oh, I still don't know the glasses. Oh, he kicks him in the face. Fun fact, when I was in middle school, one of the only fights I've ever been in, I'm playing basketball, and this kid takes our ball, and I'm like, full of hormones, and I'm a teenager, and I'm like, man, I've had a bad day. So I go to kick the ball. I think I could have kicked the ball. I could have kicked him in the face. It's hard to say. Lines got blurred. Anyway, it was very similar to that, except maybe a ball hit his face or maybe my foot hit his face. He gets up, he punches me. I push him away. We have this very awkward, like eight foot away standoff. And then we go back to what we were doing. That's one of the few fights that I've been in. Okay, so now we're working on a little bit of weapons defense here. Uh, there's like a couple like thought processes of, of self-defense when it comes to weapons. One, it's like crash the distance, right? If it's something like this, a long wooden object, you want to stay on the outside range, especially if you know range pretty well, you know how long the thing is, stay on the outside. And then some people will say stay on the outside and then wait until the weapon is on the back side of the swing and then you get inside of it, you crash the distance. Let's see if he does that. Whoa. He gets his own bottle. Break the bottle, man. Break the bottle. Ooh. Not a bad idea. Using stuff as cover. Usually you don't want to stay in front of the cover. Just a thought. Throws like this are super dangerous in a street fight because of the concrete. The ground in fights, I would have to imagine, is like the thing that hurts people long term the most. Like death. Death. So being up, way in the air, and then having your head come first. Put on sunglasses, man. What do the sunglasses do? Look at them, they're everywhere. What are they, zombies? It doesn't matter, it's not important. Uh-oh, girl in danger. What's going on? Why are you making such a big deal out of this? It was nothing. You call that nothing? Okay, so we're starting off very, very typical. Guy harassing girl. Other guy must stand up for her. What did he do? Dude, she's so overreacting. You shut up. He First off, this guy should just get punched no matter what. <laughs> Look at his hair. 
I get it's a party, but like that's a completely different outfit than everybody else is wearing. Why is he bringing back frosted tips? Am I missing something? This dude's dressed like he's in an acapella group, and this guy looks like he's about to steal somebody's denim jacket wearing 90s girlfriend. I wanted to get a drink, so I said okay, and then we went into this big room with a pool table, and we were just kissing. See? No big deal. But then he started going for more, so I bonked him with the pool ball. Yeah, which hurt. Okay. Pool ball, not a bad option. It's about hand size. You can throw it, you can hit with it. You'd probably smoke a finger or two, but not a bad weapon. By the way, freaking piece of sh It always cracks me up when people substitute one cuss word, but not both. Obviously, like, there's some censorship in movies, but, like, why would you say, you know, shirt and not freaking, you know? I just, that's just a funny thing. No, she's my little sister, you idiot. And if you Ooh. ever touch her again. What, I you wanna go? You wanna go, man? Uh oh. Let's go. Let's get it. Why'd you just take off your shirt? I don't know. Actually, taking off your shirt's probably a pretty good idea. Many a time I have seen fights where shirts get pulled over top of the head. You end up in like this situation here where you're not sure what's going on. Your shirt's inside your mouth. You're like being grabbed and pulled and then uppercuts come in. It's not where you want to be. Also, you have more range of motion. There's a reason that fighters fight without clothes on, unless you're one of those jujitsu fellas. Being shirtless, not a terrible idea. That's for me to know and for you to find out. What? No, Cameron, come on. No. No. Not this time. Look at his hair. Cameron, He's please. worth it. If you ever go near my sister again. What? Ooh, okay, pretty impressive. Now the no flinch is cool if it's just a feint. If he's just doing that, which he looked like he was. He was pretty close. Odds are he wasn't gonna be able to hit from that close. But if he hadn't flinched, if he hadn't had like a natural huh, reflex and the dude did throw something, he would have been slept. So cool in the moment, but if he had thrown something, you gotta be careful. Okay. Obviously, we're supposed to think his reflex is much faster. Spinning back kick. Now, this isn't Cobra Kai. I know what you're thinking. We'll keep going. Classic Johnny Wang move. What the was that? I'm pretty sure that was me kicking your No, that was his chest. Oh, why? It was so cool leading up to it. Your hair looks stupid. I'd never look stupid in public. I'm gonna teach you a lesson. One that you'll never forget. Come on, Robbie Keane. Why'd they make him do that? They could have at least used a better take. Nice parry, nice slip. A little redirection. Cameron, that's enough. That's enough. He, he's done nothing to him. He kicked him in the chest, that was it. Mess him up. Oh, check out Captain Bad. I dare you to try that again. Oh, he's got his hands behind his back. <laughs> if somebody's slipping literally everything you throw to the head, start throwing shots to the body. The body's relatively in the same spot. If they're slipping left and right, quit trying to punch them in the face. Goes for the nice throw there. What's he get? Catches the arm. Wait, you're not leaving, are you? Yeah, I think- The shirtless bad hair guy just attacked me and my sister. I think I'm gonna leave. But don't forget your camera. No, 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 no! Ah, oh. oh, not the camera. I would never do that to you. You think that I'm talking to you, the, the watcher, but I'm actually talking to the camera. Okay, that was good. That was from He's All That. Okay, little known movie. Not a lot of people know about this. This is from Anchorman. Well, is it a shortcut or not? <laughs> okay. Uh oh, Vince Vaughn and his boys. If you were Shane from Fight Tips, this would be the point where you take a mouth guard out of your back pocket and you put it in the mouth. Keep a tight perimeter. Why did he say keep a tight perimeter? They're putting the perimeter around them. They have no control. Also, right now, they're all on bikes. Every single one of them's on a bike. Do you know how vulnerable it is to be on a bike? Literally, what are they gonna do? Just. <laughs> Offensively, there's nothing you can do on a bike unless you're going full speed and coming at somebody. And even then, like, that's not, it's kind of a vulnerable position to be in. Just push them off the bikes. Smoking's not a good idea before a fight. I would imagine it has some effect on your lungs. You need the lung capacity to be able to fight. Okay. I want a poker. Now he has pulled a knife. That is enough for you to, what's this guy doing with his tongue? At this point, I'm probably thinking, okay, I'm gonna start to back up. I'm gonna find a different way out of this. Yeah, or you could just pull out a huge salt shaker. 
I'm sure it's not really a salt shaker, but Come pepper shaker maybe. Wait, so is it a pepper taster? Come get a taste. Was that like a reference to how it looks like a pepper grinder? Rick, where'd you get a hand grenade? I don't know. Okay, so the weapons here are gun, which obviously trumps the rest of them other than hand grenade. Hand grenade is going to hurt all of you, clearly. Um, dude's got brass knuckles. So obviously the team with the gun and the grenade should win. At this range, okay, and once all of the teams have assembled, this is what it felt like when I did the Knights video, when I, when I got the full knight armor. It was just like, I had no idea what was going on. I knew there was people all around me. It makes no sense that there would be a guy like Brick with a hand grenade and everybody would run towards him to fight. And those are the ones that hurt the worst. <laughs> it's a very typical fight thing to be like, oh yeah, the ones, the ones you don't see that hurt the worst or whatever. All right, and that's that. Okay, so apparently this is from a movie called Big Stan. Bob Sapp has had a very interesting career in MMA. I think he was a football player before that. Now, if that was one of his later MMA fights, Bob Sapp would have quit by then, for sure. Actually, this kind of is starting to be reminiscent a little bit of old Bob Sapp fights. Okay, interesting. Going low kicks. On a guy that big, I probably wouldn't suggest low kicks. Unless they were, like, big with, like, small legs. Bob Sapp's obviously built like a truck, so I don't think leg kicks would do much. If I had to fight somebody like Bob Sapp, I mean, probably don't. Size doesn't matter. Leg kicks like that would not do much. Goes for a wrist lock. Oh, I don't know what I was expecting. It wasn't a wrist lock to three separate major pain breaks. Here's the thing, wrist locks do hurt, but a lot of the time you can get like a decent bit of pain and then, and then worse, yeah, you get one of these. Ooh, a little hatchet kick. Okay, not a bad kick there. Given the size difference, he waits until he's got the actual angle, and then he goes a hatchet kick. Okay, so now he's being attacked by multiple people. Okay. Rob Schneider actually looks pretty good here. Okay, now he's got the bow staff. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All of these bow techniques are very like stopping on the person, which would happen, except it wouldn't be like a, he's doing that so he's not smashing people with a bow, right? But in all actuality, if you were to hit somebody, it wouldn't go through like you might see in a movie. It would probably stop, but it'd be more like a bang, and he'd probably get a little bounce back from it. That would definitely be enough, that would hurt. Now he's got two sticks. A little Kali action. Interesting, a lot of different martial arts shown here. So you've got like Kali, where they use Eskrima and they pop, 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 do that whole shtick. They use the bow, which is not a traditionally Filipino type of fighting that I understand. But then he's also thrown like spinning back fists, spinning side kicks. At this point, don't take the stick. Actually, at this point, probably take the stick and then throw it at him and then run in goes for the release. So if you talk to like super high level Kali instructors, they tend to realize that most stick releases don't come from those fancy movements. They come from usually by accident or by force. In my experience, I have let go most of things when either my hand is hit and it's like forced out or during like weird tie ups that kind of like by accident, the stick goes flying and you're both like, and then you go for it. Everybody's saying, don't take it. Don't take it. Very cool. Very funny. All right. And that's all she wrote. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, if you have other suggestions of things you'd like for me to react to, please put them down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the new channel, Sensei Seth Reacts. Until next time.